Hello friends! With the recent release of Metroid Dread, many people are either revisiting or playing the classic Metroid games for the first time. Probably one of the most popular, especially since it's available for free via Switch Online service, is Super Metroid. But did you know that Super Metroid contains several secret techniques that the game never tells you how to do? They do tease some of these to you if you wait for the demos to play on the game's title screen, but never show you how to actually perform these moves yourself. These these are by no means mandatory and aren't all particularly useful, usually being outclassed by main upgrades like the screw attack, but they are pretty fun techniques nonetheless. I realized after some digging around that it's pretty difficult to find any YouTube videos showing how to do these, so I just decided to make my own video. I'm gonna give you the controls for these moves as if you have the default control scheme, so if you've done custom button mapping, then just keep that in mind. Just to get this out of the way, I love wall jumping, and you can see me abuse this mechanic extensively in my Super Metroid streams. But that's a move the game does actually show you, so I won't be covering it here. Alright, let's get into it, here are some of Super Metroid's secret techniques. First on our list is Shine Sparking. Now, like wall jumping, the game does actually show you the basics of this technique, and it has been carried into other games in the series, but the game only shows you how to shine spark upwards. So let's talk about it a little bit more in depth. First off, to Shine Spark, you need the Speed Booster upgrade. If you hold the B button to run until you have a fully charged speed boost, which you can tell because Samus will begin flashing, then immediately press down on the D-pad, you can store this charge. Press A to release the charge, and launch yourself upwards. This is how the game teaches you to Shine Spark. But there's more to it than this. So to expand on this, when releasing a Shine Spark, you can also press in a direction, left or right, to Shine Spark sideways. Alternatively, if you hold R, which is the angle button to aim diagonally, at the same time as you release your charge, you can Shine Spark diagonally. This is useful for accessing rooms that are normally out of reach before getting the space jump. Just note, and this is something specific to Super Metroid, that you do take damage when using the Shine Spark, so don't abuse it too much if you don't have to. Next up is another move teased on the game's title screen, the Crystal Flash. This one is really easy to pull off and will allow you to heal yourself at the cost of ammunition. This will only work if you have less than 50 energy and have no energy left in your reserve tanks. So if you're super low on health, simply find a safe spot with no enemies, go into morph ball mode with power bombs selected, and at the same time, hold down L, R, down, and X. Samus will drop the power bomb and then absorb the bomb's energy. This will restore a great deal of energy, including filling up some of your reserve tanks. As cool as this is, however, I have literally never had to actually use this move. Between health drops from enemies and energy recharge stations, there isn't much use for it, but it is at the very least visually super cool. Next are the charge beam combos. First, to use a charge beam combo, you can't have your beams stacked. So go into the pause menu and disable any beams other than the one you want to use and the charge beam. So for this first example, we'll have the charge beam and plasma beam turned on. Now to use this move, it's pretty simple. Have power bombs selected and charge your beam up. And the move will activate automatically. This will create charged energy that will circle around Samus and destroy any enemies in the area. This consumes a power bomb each time it's used, however, but over the course of the game, you collect way more power bombs than you'd ever need. The plasma beam charge combo will circle like so and destroy most enemies. If you do the same but with the ice beam selected instead, it's a bit more limited. It surrounds Samus with four ice charges, which will deplete when colliding with enemies. The first hit will freeze them, and the second will kill them. 
Finally, the wave beam charge combo is probably the most useful of these three. These wave beam charges will surround Samus and pulse in and outward from her, destroying any nearby enemies. This one is my favorite for its increased range and longevity compared to the others. So those are some advanced techniques for Super Metroid that the game doesn't actually show you how to do. I hope you guys found this video helpful, or at the very least, kinda interesting. It's always neat being able to find secrets in our favorite games and pull off advanced techniques like this, so maybe this will make your next playthrough of this classic game just a little bit more fun. Anyways guys, that's all I've got for now, have a great rest of your day, Bye bye Thank you so much for watching this video, I just wanted to take a quick second to say thank you to the lovely people who supported me on Patreon as well as my channel members, particularly those who supported at the cheese level or higher, which includes Tetra, Brenda, Justin, Callie, Finley, Grey Mage, Hylian Historian, Gale, and Ethan3G. Thank you so much for the support you guys, and I will catch you all next time. Bye bye <laughs>